This conference will now be recorded. Today we'll discuss about, uh, we'll just revise about rhinosporidiosis, cystisarcosis, and mother of it. Okay, rhinos, this, this has already been discussed to you, and this, this is just a revision class. Rhinosporidiosis has been defined as a chronic granulomatous disease characterized by production of polyps and other manifestations of hyperplasia of nasal mucosa. Okay, the etiological agent is rhinosporidium severe. It is initially believed to be a sporozoan classified under fungus okay? and recently placed under trips of aquatic protestant parasites. PCR tests have not been demonstrated, have not been demonstrated fungal proteins. Okay? Um, more than 90% of cases have been reported from India and Sri Lanka, Madurai. Uh, okay, and various zones of Tamil Nadu, and transmission is probably due to taking bath in common ponds. And the physical characteristics of water in the ponds are the reasons for endemicity, presence of synergistic aquatic organisms, and genetic predisposition in patients affected and post immunity. Okay, what is the life cycle? Spore is the basic infecting unit, it is about 7 microns in size and also known as sperium. It has clear cytoplasm with 15 to 20 vacuoles filled with food material. It is enclosed in a kinetous membrane found only in connective tissue spaces and is really intracellular. These spores start to increase in size at 50 to 60 micron size. Granules start to appear. Nucleus prepares for cell division. Mitosis occurs. Uh, and at seventh division, size becomes 100 microns. Fully mature sporangium is. 150 microns. Mature spores are formed in the center and immature ones at the periphery. Okay. Chopozoid, which is 6 to 100 microns, it has single nucleus at 6 micron stage or multiple nuclei at 100 micron stage. Lipid granules are seen in the cytoplasm. Intermediate sporangium is 100 to 150 microns in diameter. It has bilamellar cell wall, outer chitinous, and inner cellulose. Immature spores are seen within the cytoplasm. There are no mature spores seen inside the cytoplasm. Okay. So this is the life cycle of uh, rhinosporidium. You have multiple spores. And clinical classification classified as nasal, nasopharyngeal, mixed, bizarre, or malignant rhinosporidiosis. The common sites are in nose, it is about 78%. Most common in nose, nasopharynx, 68 percent, tons, 3 percent, eye, 1 percent, and skin, very rare. What are the features of nasal sporidiosis? Lesions are polyboidal, red, and granular. Lesions may be multiple, pedunculated, and friable. Surface is studded with whitish dots, that is sporangia. The nasal lesions are highly vascular and bleeds on touch. The whole mass could be seen to be covered with mucus secretion. The lesion is restricted to nasal mucous membrane and does not cross the muc mucocutaneous junction. And the, the, this is the histopathology showing papillomatous hyperplasia of mucous membrane with uh, rough uh, form, root, root formation. Epithelium over sporangia is thinned out and giant cells could be seen in this area. See giant cells. And accumulation of mucus in the crypts, increased vascularity due to angiogenesis factor and the spore stain with sudan black and bromophenol blue. And features of Nasal sporidiosis is chronicity, recurrence, and dissemination. Reasons for ethnicity, mm, chronicity, antigen sequestration, antigenic variation, immune suppression, immune distraction, immune deviation, and binding of host immunoglobulins. Treatment is surgery and dapsin for 100 mg per day for six months. So this is about rhinosporidiosis. And next, Madhura foot. Madhura foot is also called mycetoma, which is tumor-like. Chronic granulomatous disease characterized by localized infection of 
subcutaneous tissues and sometimes bone characterized by discharging sinuses filled with organisms like actinomycetes or fungi. Okay. History Gill first described the dis disease in the Madura district of India, hence the term Madura food. And what is the pathophysiology typically present in agricultural workers, hands, shoulders, and back from carrying contaminated vegetation and other burdens? The individuals who, who walk barefoot in dry, dusty conditions, people who work in rural areas where they are exposed to uh, acacia trees or cactus thorns containing the etiological agents. Spread occurs through skin, facial planes, and can involve the bone. Two thirds arise on the foot, but can involve the hands, back, or shoulders. Following initial injury, the disease follows a slow chronic course over many years with painless swelling and intermittent discharge of pus. There may be a deep itching sensation. Pain may occur due to secondary bacterial infection or bone invasion. After some years, massive swelling of area occurs with induration, skin rub. Sinus tract formation as the infection spreads, old sinuses close and new ones open. And this is the sign uh, sh picture showing sinus discharge. And Madhra foot mycetoma, it, is, it may be due to fungi, that is, new mycetoma or due to bacteria or actinomycetoma. Due to mycetoma, which is 40%, and due to bacteria, actinomycetoma is more common, 60%. Actinomycetoma may be due to actinomadra madure, actinomycetoma. Madra pelletira, streptomyces somaliensis, and nucatia species. New mycetoma is often due to Madhurilla mycetoma and others. And this is the Madhura foot showing swollen foot training sciences. And sections show fungi invading subcutaneous bones also may be what? Narcotic granules. So, seen in Madhurilla mycetosis, uh, differs in various. Uh, subtypes. Diagnosis, clinical features, slow spreading skin infection, local swelling will be there, small heart painless nodules and ulcer pus discharge and scarred skin and discoloration, itching and there will be pain and burning sensation. Okay, this is a long standing mycetoma disease and sinuses, there will be discharge in sinuses from nocardia infection resulting in watery, watering can appearance. And what are the lab studies? Direct microscopy, blood. There will be leukocytosis and neutrophilia. Neutrophilic leukocytosis rates, fiddles, uh, fungi or bacteria, skin biopsy, serology, DNA sequencing has been used for identification in difficult cases. And on microscopy, serosinous fluid containing the granules. Serosinous fluid containing the Realms examined using 10% KOH and partnering or calcifor white marks. Tissue section stained using HND, PA, periodic acid shift stain, and Brockhart's metamine silver stains. And actinomycotic grains contains very fine filaments. Fungal grains contain short, high branched filaments that are often swollen. This is the excised mycetoma showing, showing the grain sinus. This is the microscopy. Skin biopsy, HND stain, HND stain tissue showing black grain, new mycotic mycetoma caused by Madrilla mycetoma. Culture is based on abroad dextrose agar or mycobiotic agar to isolate blood agar to isolate bacteria. Agar plates are cultured at 25 to 30 degrees and 37 degrees for up to six weeks. Fungi grow more quickly than actinomycetoma. Of Nucardia culture, Nucardia and culture fluid in agar. Okay, serology, immunodiffusion test, eumycotic mycetoma infections, counter immunofluorescence, enzyme like linked immunosorbent assay, that is the western. Imaging is also be done to assess for evidence of bone involvement. No. CT scan may be more sensitive in the early stages. MRI scans, better assessment of the degree of bone and soft tissue involvement and may be useful in evaluating differential diagnosis. Okay. There may be osteoporosis also. Use mm. of antifungals when it is due to fungal antibiotics, treatment of any secondary infections and amputation in severe cases. Okay. 
this is about um, mitra mitosis and cystisocosis it is a consequence of an end stage infection by tapeworm called tenia solium and if ingested larval organisms leave the lumen of the git where they would otherwise develop into mature tapeworms they end cyst okay cyst can be found throughout the body cyst is common within the brain and subarachnoid space that is neural cyst surfaces cyst sarcosis typically manifests as mass lesion and can cause seizures symptoms can intensify when the infested organism dies and after therapy the organism is cyst with smooth lining the body wall and booklets from above mouth parts are most commonly recognized death of the encysted organism may produce inflammatory reaction in the surrounding brain often indicating eosinophils and macrophages that is neurocyst neurocystosis and this is about cystosarcosis okay thank you